Welcome back to Arsenal Pass. It's Hayden here today with the final installment in our Welcome to Wraith Draft Guide series, focusing on our heroes of Wraith. This time, it is Dorinthia, the Hand of Soul, uh, or the Defender of Solana, as it were, part of the Hand of Soul. A warrior that's focused around uh, the Dawnblade weapon that she wields in Welcome to Wraith, around Reprise, the mechanic Reprise, which is all about you know adding these attack reactions onto the combat chain, making it difficult for our opponents to, to know how to defend, uh, to be able to respond to those attacks and be able to keep out damage and stop that Dawnblade from potentially getting those all-important counters on them that give that extra advantage to Dawnblade. So in this video, as always, going to be going over the strengths and weaknesses of our hero here, Dorinthia. Going to also touch on some of the key archetypes and some of the key cards that you should be looking at when you want to draft Dorinthia and Welcome to Wraith Draft. Now, Dorinthia was seen originally in Welcome to Wraith as one of the sort of more dominant or prominent heroes, the one you wanted to be in, you really wanted to be a warrior if you were drafting Dorinthia and Welcome to Wraith. In fact, in the first few callings, Dorinthia was hugely popular uh, alongside Guardian in both sealed and draft at top tables. And now it's sort of swapped a little bit. As players have gotten better at, uh, at the game, you know, understanding fundamentals, how to defend and how to attack, Dorinthia's stock has definitely gone down a little bit. But Dorinthia is still a very good hero. There's still some really good tools. And I don't think Dorinthia is the weakest. I mean, it might be of these four, but it definitely doesn't mean that it, it is weak and that you shouldn't draft this, uh, this class. There's a lot of really powerful things you can do. And I'm going to go over some of the archetypes that you can play that exploit her strengths around a prize, that Dawnblade, and the, the sort of the art of surprise, I guess, um, that you can have. So let's get into it and talk about the strengths of Dorinthia and welcome to Wraith Draft. If you've been watching all of our hero guides so far, at this point, you're going to expect it. Top of the strengths list has to be the Dawnblade, Dorinthia's weapon. Now, when we talk about some of the other weapons that we have access to in Welcome to Wraith Limited, so that's Rumping Club with our Brute, that's Anathos with Bravo, and of course, Kadachi's with Katsu, they all have different strengths. And where the Dawnblade really comes into play is, is kind of two, twofold. So first of all, one cost for three. You know what? That's that's okay. That's fine. But we really, really start to get the advantage out of Dawnblade. And the strength of Dawnblade as a weapon in this format is the ability to potentially attack twice with it and stack those counters on top of it. Get those plus one, plus, you know, those plus one attack counters on it. That's where the strength really comes in. So when we think about Dorinthia Unlimited, we're thinking about, okay, how can we best get use out of this weapon? That one cost weapon, what can we pair that with? Is that these non-attack actions that Dorinthia has access to? Is it uh, putting reprise non-attack uh, reactions on top of that? Is it trying to get a second attack with this weapon? Or is it potentially an attack with an attack action after the weapon? And thanks to the one cost, we have a lot of flexibility of how we can do this and what sort of archetypes we can build. And, and Dorinthia has this Dawnblade that is quite flexible in those strengths. The ability to blow out defensive cycles is one of Dorinthia's biggest strengths in Welcome to Wraith Draft, Reprise. That's really what it is all about. You have the ability to come in with your Dawnblade for a, a three, just an innocent looking three damage, and all of a sudden you can be adding pretty easily six damage on top of that with one to two attack reactions, depending on what attack reactions you have. And it is really difficult for the opponent to decide how to defend and how to defend effectively in all situations. Now, there's a few rules of thumb that you can follow when you play Dorinthia. If there's threatening a go again with cards like Warrior's Valor, then often it's you know it's okay to over defend and and uh, soak up that extra damage and avoid an attack reaction. Often you would expect to see one attack reaction, but when you're in the seat playing Dorinthia, there's a lot of things you can do about how you want to craft your turns, and that is really one of the strengths that you have is being able to just absolutely blow out those defensive cycles for your opponent and uh, and trade up on cards. Flexibility to focus on the weapon. I did talk about Dawnblade at the start. But we, can, we cannot forget that one of the cool things you can do with Dorinthia is, is actually how you utilize that weapon. So how many cards you use on your any given turn, uh, whether that be to set up really strong offensive cycles with four to five cards, or it be maybe to come in with one to two cards uh, and try to trade some damage that way. Typically, one card is never where you want to be when you're playing with Dorinthia uh, because you just really you can't represent an attack uh, reaction. You can't play an attack, a non-attack action, and you can't play an attack action. So... Generally, two cards is the minimum Dorinthia wants to play play on, but anywhere from two to five cards, there's a lot of flexibility and things that Dorinthia can do. Although the less cards you have, the easier it is for your opponent to uh, to understand what you might do, and we will talk about that soon. It can do a mix of all. This is one of the really cool things about Dorinthia. Traditionally, the focus has been on the Dawnblade only, but you can use that Dawnblade in so many different ways that you can, you can pair it with attack uh, actions. You can pair it with non-attack actions. You can pair it with 
tech reactions. And when we talk about the archetypes, I'm going to showcase exactly how you can utilize a lot of the width of cards in Welcome to Wraith to draft these archetypes. You just have to understand what they look like and the cards that you're looking for. Onto the weaknesses now for Dorinthia, and there's definitely a few for Dorinthia, although I would say these are probably uh, wider than they are deep. Opponents can play around attack reactions. This is very true. It's not easy to do, but it can be done, especially in a draft format where players are going to see the cards going around. So maybe your opponent in round two is the person who is sitting to your right feeding you your Dorinthia cards. Good chance they know a good chunk of the cards that you could have, especially if they've passed you marquee cards, maybe like Red Overpower or Blue Overpower or Red Warrior's Valor. They're going to know the cards that they should and shouldn't play around. Uh, Red Iron Song Response. How likely is it that you have that? So there is that sort of, I guess, disadvantage a little bit in draft that you don't have as much in sealed. So that is something to keep in mind. And it is, you know, it is it is a skill, an acquired skill, I think, to be able to play around Dorinthia, be able to play around those reprise actions. But also once you, uh, reprise reactions rather, but also once you get through to the second cycle of the deck, it does make it a little bit easier for your opponent to know what's coming up. Because if you pitch, you know, say yellow cards, maybe a blue overpower, well, your opponent's going to know about that and uh, they can play around that in the late game. They're going to know probably when you, you drew it, uh, as long as they're keeping track of those sort of things. And they, you know, it's not overly hard to keep track of a couple of key cards. So definitely a weakness that Dorinthia does have is that I would say into, especially into better players, uh, you can struggle just because they might be able to play around what you have a bit better. It's harder to go wide with Dorinthia. There's more restraints on the cards you need to play in order to go wide. So if you are trying to go wide, it's often going to involve the Dawnblade and you're going to need cards like Driving Blade or Warrior's Valor. Now Driving Blade, natural go again, fantastic. But it does cost two resources. So Swing of the Dawn Blade, playing that Driving Blade and the blue to pitch for it, that's already, you know, two cards right there. And then if you have another attack to play afterwards or more resources to attack with Dawn Blade again, you're going to need another card. Plus, if it's an attack action, that's another card. Plus the resources, of course. So you're already up to four cards. And if it's a uh, attack reaction that you need on top or a non -attack, another non-attack action, that's also going to cost you another card. So... Going wider does have more stipulations, more restraints for Dorinthia, but when she does pull it together, it can be really, really strong. Uh, it just takes a bit more focus. The fewer cards you play off, the easier it is for an opponent to understand what you're doing, for them to respond, and then to work out how to best optimally play their turn. A good example of this is if you come in with Dawnblade for just three damage, uh, you have a card in Arsenal, and you've uh, pitched a red card for it. Well, Iron Strong Response would be the best card that you could have there if they defend more likely you've probably got something that costs or maybe something you want to play later on, but the opponent has the decision. Well, I can either draw that Iron Song response out now, potentially, throw a card down in front to defend three and maybe take three over the top, or I can just not take anything, keep my whole hand and, and come back in and maybe it's going to be really, they know they get to take your whole hand and you won't be able to use that Iron Song next turn. So there's just these sort of situations where the opponent has, has some information about what you could play. And that's why I think it's really important that you don't overdraft on attack reactions and overdraft on reprise cards because your opponent can you know, play around those cards to an extent. And we will talk about some of the archetypes and one of the ones that I think is quite strong really revolves more around non-attack actions. Although upfront damage seems easy to play around, uh, a lot of these upfront damage cards have on-hit effects or give go again. So those are really important. Last thing I want to talk about is that uh, your hands can be a little bit more awkward. Sometimes you need more specific resources to play things. We talked about this with the example of Driving Blade plus, you know, the uh, blue resource card plus maybe the attack action to play afterwards plus the resources to pay for that. Again, more stipulations on how you can and cannot play your hands with Dorinthia. And it's really important to keep these in mind when you get into draft. I do think that Dorinthia is one of the hardest classes to draft just in terms of when you want to put these archetypes together. You do need a few more specific cards. There's less cards, I think, that just fill a catch-all role. And that's important to remember. But we will talk about what some of those important cards are for each archetype so that you can make sure that you get your hands on those during the draft. All right, then. Let's get into the archetypes with Dorinthia. And the one I want to start with is, is a go-wide Dorinthia. But really what I call this is Driving Blade Dorinthia because that is the key card in it. And I did say before that I would talk about the really key cards that you need to pull these archetypes together. And if you want to build a go-wide Dorinthia, uh, Driving Blade is one of the cards you're going to need. The other cards you're going to need is good resources to pair with these. You're going to need good ways to pay for that two cost Driving Blade. That you can come in with your Dawn Blade and then play something afterwards. Now either you're going to want to attack with that Dawn Blade again if you connect and trigger Dorinthia's hero ability so that you can attack with the weapon a second time or you're going to want to play an attack action. So there's some really important things you want to consider with this archetype. I mean this is literally what you're building around is a go-wide style of, of Driving Blade, um, 
of coming in with Dawnblade, you're going to have a few attack reactions, you're going to have a few powerful attack actions that you can play after Driving Blade, and you're going to have a few attack reactions. And you're going to mix these together, and it's going to be more difficult for your opponent to know which plan you're on on any given Driving Blade. And also, if you draft the right sort of uh, ratios of cards, you can actually potentially do both. A good example of this is I pitch my blue card, uh, it could be a blue Raging Onslaught. I come in with my Driving Blade and the Dawn Blade. So I've spent two cards so far, I'm coming in for six. Let's say it's a red Driving Blade. Now my opponent can block that out. Maybe they defend for two cards for six. And potentially, maybe I have in my hand a blue Iron Song response and a red Raging Onslaught, let's say. I have two options here. I can just let them do what they just did. We, we trade off cards there. My Dawn Blade doesn't have the ability to attack a second time, but I can pitch my blue Iron Song response and I can play my red Raging Onslaught for seven damage. That's a pretty good turn. Pretty happy with that. But the other option I have available to me is to pitch that, uh, is to play that blue iron song response and get that damage over the top, trigger my Dorinthia hero ability, and then pitch that red card and come in with the uh, with the dawn blade for a second attack. Now, if I really want to pull cards from my opponent's hand, that's probably a pretty good way to do it because they're going to be forced to block that dawn blade or give me the counter. But the damage output is lower, so I do have some options there. Uh, maybe a better example might be say a yellow uh, Raging Onslaught is the other card in my hand. I could come in for six, or I could come in with Dawnblade again. And maybe, you know, we've had an Arsenal sitting there, a Red Stroke of Foresight, for instance. So when you pair these, these non-attack actions, primarily Driving Blade, these attack reactions and some good uh, attack actions together, you're going to be able to form this Go Wide or Driving Blade style deck. So just to wrap it up, key cards, Driving Blade. You want these blues and um, reds in particular. Yellows are also fantastic. To be honest, you just want a few of these. Blues are good. I like these because they also pay for other driving blade turns or for attack action turns. And then late game, you know, they can come around and be the driving blades again. You're going to want some form of attack reactions. So Iron Song responses are great because they cost zero. And driving blade is always forcing go against. The opponent kind of needs to deal with this in some way. So they're really resource efficient. I like all colors of these again. Uh, but yellow and uh, blue in particular are really strong for the reason we just talked about. I want some attack actions. Some cards like Wounding Blow uh, or Barraging Brawnhide. These cards are, are really strong. They can be blues that I, I pay for, or they can be reds or yellows that I actually play in the situations we just spoke about before. That's a really common sort of line of play. With this deck, we are trying to mostly play five card hands or four card hands. Uh, but on turns, we don't have Driving Blade. That's fine. We can defend with a couple of cards. Maybe we just pitch a blue and play our attack action. Maybe Arsenal and Driving Blade ready for a five card turn or Arsenal and attack reaction. So... This is an archetype that I think is, is fairly easy to get together. If you see Driving Blades, you just have to take them quite high. Um, and it's just about the ratios and those blues versus reds that you come up with and having a mix of each of those three things that we talked about across the different pitch values. Our second archetype for Dorinthia is what I'm calling a, a low-cost Dawnblade aggro archetype. Now, in the last archetype, I, I did leave off at the end, you probably want, realistically, a high blue count in that deck just because of the cost value. And you want those blues to be really functional. So to be honest, playing you know 12, 13 blues in that style of Dorinthia deck is is pretty pretty on uh, on par of where you want to be. To be honest, you often want to see you know two blues or a blue and a yellow in every turn, and, and don't underrate those yellows. They can actually be pretty effective uh, if they're in the right cards, like Iron Song Response, for instance. But now moving to a low cost Dawnblade aggro. Well, on the flip side of this, I really only want to see one blue card in each of these hands. So I'm looking at playing you know somewhere around. 10 max maybe 8 to 10 blues is probably what i'm looking at and this build this build is really focused around cheap reactions so the zero and one cost attack reactions we're still focused around dawnblade we are with all of these archetypes really in dorinthia uh it's non-attack action so sharpened steels warriors valors are fantastic you want to get some of these they're going to try and force go again and help your reactions come into play by forcing your opponent to defend get that reprise on a flock of the feather walkers is fantastic in this build you can take a turn off set up a, a, um, a card like Sharpen Steel or a Nature's Path Pilgrimage and Arsenal, play that flock, come and have the natural go again off the quicken, and now you're really starting to throw some curveballs at your opponent, making it difficult for them to defend. As I said at the top with the weaknesses and strengths, one of the things we want to do is not make it predictable for our opponent and how uh, they might be able to defend. So natural go again is, is a really tough way to do that. If you come with a Warrior's Valor for six, maybe your opponent just throws nine defense worth of of, uh, of cards down, comes in with a weapon on their turn. Not the greatest turn cycle for us, but when we've got Natural Go again, when we've got cards with on-hit effects like Nature's Path, Pilgrimage, and Warrior's Valor, it makes it more difficult for our opponent to, to really do anything about it. With this low-cost aggro deck, one of the things we really want to do is get a counter and keep it on there if we can. Um, as I say, trying to get a blue into our hand, trying to play three or four cards, 
across non-attack actions and attack reactions and push that dawn blade through it's weapon 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 focus we're really not that focused on attack actions outside of cards like flock of the feather walker and some zero cost attack actions so some good cards here are like snatch uh, scar for a scar wounding blow um is quite a quite a strong strong card you know cost zero comes in for four at red even the blue strong can just be tacked on to the end of the chain if our weapon doesn't have the ability to uh, attack a second time with that said let's move on to our last archetype for dorinthia one of the things about welcome to wraith is that it is a slower format than you might be used to if you've drafted monarch and of course tales of aria which can be quite fast paced formats you often don't see the second cycle of your deck in the majority of the games that you play now that's quite different with welcome to wraith and uh, in a lot of games you can actually get to that second cycle there's a lot of class cards that defend for three uh, the the ability to push out power really comes from you know setting up turns and there's a lot more sort of chip damage coming in and, and defending is is quite strong often in a lot of cases um, now that's going to depend on the matchup and the deck that you've built and what your opponent has but i would say it is more common than in some of the more recent sets of draft so an archetype that's pretty prevalent across all four heroes is a more setup based archetype and with dorinthia we we're no exception here we have this available to us and what i'm calling like a, a setup or semi otk style dorinthia now this is really focused around defensive turn cycles and coming back through to a big turn with reactions uh potions are really important in this as well uh, all the potions are really good for this warriors valors sharpen steels all these cards that you can get it's surely sharpen um sharpen steel we talked about steel blade shunt sorry is the card i'm thinking of from a defense reaction standpoint unmovables sink belows and really what we want to do is we want to be quite defensive on our turn cycles, win the turn cycles from a defensive standpoint, and we can pitch some of our power cards, some of our red cards, to actually pay for that Dawnblade, because it only costs one, get those to the bottom of our deck, and set those up for the late game. Now, what that kind of in-game turn really looks like is, ideally, either you play like a Flock of the Featherwalker to get natural go again the turn before you try and set up a big turn, you are trying to maybe get a Potion into play, Energy Potion or Time Snap are fantastic. Uh, but Potion of Strength is also very good. It does work on your weapon, does give that plus two. So the potions are pretty, pretty pretty potent for us. We do want to see those. And we're trying to play, you know, one to two non-attack actions. A way to get go again, ideally, Warrior's Valor for on hit or a Quicken Token or a Time Snap Potion or a Refraction Bolters. And it's a card I haven't talked about too much in these archetypes, but Refraction Bolters is good across all these uh, archetypes and is a really high pick in Warrior. Now you want to come through, you're looking at 12 maybe even 15 damage that you're pushing through on these turns and ideally trying to get a second attack in with that uh with that dawn blade there's some majestics and supers that can really help you here so steel blade supremacy is great uh, iron song determination for instance as a late game setup is also a great way to push through a dominated attack with that weapon so all that said those are the archetypes for dorinthia in welcome to wraith that i like to draft i think there's more outside of this there's some more uh traditional archetypes which are based around just kind of playing a good aggressive warrior deck but I think as people get better at playing Welcome to Wraith in particular, being defensive and understanding turn cycles, these three archetypes I think are probably the best for trying to find some success. And I think there's a really succinct way that you can try and draft these three archetypes. Now I'm going to close it out and talk about some of the key cards that I think you should be looking for drafting in Welcome to Wraith if you want to get into Dorinthia. And before we wrap up this video with talking about some of the key cards, I do just want to talk about some key considerations for drafting Dorinthia in Welcome to Wraith, as we do with all the heroes in these hero guides. Now, first off, key considerations, you need to plan around what you're going to do with your Dawnblade. So this really comes back to the three archetypes we talked about, or if you've got your own archetype maybe that you've de developed that plays around Dawnblade. You need to work out what you want to be doing and which cards you want to draft highly, because a lot of the cards that these uh, archetypes play around, like the Driving Blades, the Warriors Velas, the Sharpened Steels, uh, the, defense, uh, the Attack Reactions, these are not replacement level cards. Some of the attack reactions maybe, but certain ones like Iron Song Response, for instance, which is zero cost, when you need those, they aren't replacement level. So these cards do become really high priority on any pick order when you start to get into these archetypes. And there's other cards that just should be high priority pick order, which we will talk about. Try and keep your opponent in the dark as much as possible. Try not to get sort of, you know, baited into playing these attack reactions for really low value. One of my favorite things to do is to stick a really important attack reaction, especially one that has uh, damage already on it, so like Stroke of Foresight. Iron Song Response can be a little bit dodgy because the opponent can play around that, and it's often really uh, really obvious when you have it because of the zero cost and having no resources, but looking to push damage, it doesn't really seem to be there. So I often like getting a Stroke of Foresight or something similar into, into my arsenal to play out of uh, on a key turn where I need to push the damage, or maybe in conjunction with you know a Driving Blade or a Warrior's Valor. Uh, and try and just 
you know, not um, not overplay your hand sometimes. And that kind of leads me into my next sort of key consideration, which is defending with your cards is often the correct decision. Do, do the math. Some of these attack reactions are often better served being used as a defensive card on your opponent's turn rather than trying to add these on where your opponent can play around break points. So a yellow iron song response, for instance, if, if that card is not going to be pushing, you know, a key card like a driving blade or a warrior's valor over the top on your turn, it's probably worth just defending with that card. And this is really important to what you're trying to do on your turn to get through break points and get added value. But if it's a simple equation of what defense for three and it adds two damage, often best just to defend with those kind of cards. So really important that you do the math when you're playing Dorinthia and when you're playing around Dawnblade. Last thing I want to say is attack and attack actions are still good. Uh, you still want some of these in your Dorinthia decks. It's not all about the Dawnblade, although a couple of these archetypes really focus on the Dawnblade. Attacks are still good, whether that be on the end of a chain after go again, whether that just be pitch a blue card, play a wounding, uh, a wounding bull, or a barraging brawnhide, raging onslaught, etc. These uh, these attacks are still good, and is going to help you smooth out your deck so that when you draw, you know, high resource cards, or you don't draw an attack reaction, you're still going to be able to do things with your deck, or you don't have natural go again, you're still going to be able to do things with your Dorinthia deck, especially the ones that defend for three as well. That can be helpful. So. That said, let's talk about some of the key cards that rank really highly in pick orders for Dorinthia. Just before I give you my top five cards for Dorinthia and Welcome to Wraith Draft in my pick order, one thing I do want to say is if you are looking for a pick order guide for all the heroes that I've talked about in these Welcome to Wraith guides or just a general pick order sort of cheat sheet, you can find that up on the Arsenal Pass Patreon. Link will be down in the description. And as this is our last video in the uh, hero guides, uh, we do now have all of those up so you can go and see them five cards let's talk about them all right top of my list is refraction bolters this card is really really pivotal to a lot of the dorinthia strategies and it is just good it's go again on a stick so to speak get that defensive value out of the boots and then you have the ability to come in with Dawnblade and uh, and get the the ability to attack with that with the go again on top of it so if it ever connects refraction bolters come in again uh, means that you know on those awkward hands where maybe you've got reprise and you don't have the non-attack action to add the damage and your opponent decides not to defend you can still come in again and threaten that Dawnblade counter. So Refraction Bolters is the card that I'm looking for, top priority. Uh, Red Warrior's Valor is a card that's going to fit into all those archetypes uh, and others it stands out, but in all of them it's going to be good. One cost, plus three, threatens go again. All the things you want to be doing in these Dorinthia decks. Sharp and Steel Red, zero for three. Again, attack, uh, non-attack actions, as I say, are often really underrated because they're upfront value, but those upfront values create break points and force your opponent to do something. Warriors Valor Yellow, another one, Iron Song Response Red. Those are probably my top five when it comes to cards I'm looking for for Dorinthia across the board. Some of these will shift depending as I move into an archetype, then I start to look for, like for instance, Driving Blade Red if I want to play the Driving Blade archetype, or they feel like Driving Blades are coming part, getting past me, those go up in pick order. I really want sort of like three, four, five of those in my deck if I can across the colors, across the pitch orders. Snatch Red becomes more important for me in certain builds. And then we start to look at cards, uh, you know, like an Iron Song Determination, for instance. Different colors of Warriors, Valor, uh, Iron Song Responses, and Flock of the Feather Walkers. Those become really important cards. Stroke of Foresight is another one in there, especially in red, that we would be looking out for. In terms of maybe some of the other equipment, uh, Hope Merchant's Hood I really like in Durant Theory as well for that ability. When maybe I have all attack reactions I want to shuffle back in, or I have no attack reactions, or I have no non-attack actions, that can really help you out. So... With that said, that's the Welcome to Wraith Hero Draft Guide on Dorinthia. That concludes sort of the series on Welcome to Wraith. If you liked these videos, let us know down in the comments. Uh, this is something that we could do again in the future. Maybe we do this with Tales of Aria as well. I don't know if we're going to be saying farewell to it anytime soon, but we do have Tales still being the draft format until later in this year when we do get the next draft set. So let us know what you think. Let us know what you'd like to see. If you'd like more limited content, then we can definitely do that. But until next time, we'll see you later.